I like to give you an intuition about how the pumping lemma for regular languages works. One important fact first, the pumping lemma says that if a language is regular, then you can pump it. And if you cannot pump a language, then it can't be regular. Uh, that is not a well-formed sentence. But it is important because with a pumping lemma you can prove that if a, pump, if a language is not pumpable, then it cannot be regular. So you can prove that a language is not regular. But you cannot prove that a language is regular with a pumping lemma. But um, now I will take a regular language to show you how the pumping lemma works. I take um, A, any number of B, so I write down the regular expression for that, for that language. And now I draw you an automaton that accepts the same language. So you have an initial state and you, you have to read one A. And in this state you can read as many B's as you want. Then you take another transition reading a C. And in the final state you can read as many D's as you want. And in the pumping lemma there you have a constant N. And those constant has nothing to do with anything except with the uh, with the pumping lemma itself, but I will assume here that those n is the number of the state of the automaton that uh, accepts the language. So in this case my example n is 3. And um, please note that this is only an example and if you have the real proof then you won't have any special n. So let me take some example words. For example, if I have AC, then the length of AC is 2, and 2 is smaller than 3, and that means if uh, you can, the automaton can read the word without going, uh, without going through a loop. So you take this transition and this this transition, and you didn't take any loop, and you didn't visit any state twice. But if I take a word that is equal n, that is equal n, or that is longer than n, then uh, you have to take a loop. For example, if I have ABC, and those lengths, it has lengths of 3, and you have to go um, take this transition, then you have to go through this loop and visiting this state a second time, and taking the last transition to the final state. Or if you have another word, maybe ACD, this has also a length of 3, then you have to take this transition and this, this transition, and then you have to go through this loop to reach the whole word. So um, it's not possible if you have a word that has the same length as the number of states in automaton, or let's say as a number n, um, it's not possible to not go through a loop or to visit a state twice. So um, that's um, a thing the pumping lemma uses. Now for the next things to explain I take another word. So I take a, b, b, c, d, d. This of course has a length of 6. And those words, this word has to be separated. So I say, if I have any word x, then there must be a separation u, v, w. And of course in your book, um, maybe that x is a w and that is maybe a, b, c or something. But it doesn't really matter for how the pumping lemma works, how the uh, variables are named. Then what the pumping lemma says is that the we part must be greater or equal 1 um, because the way 
the V part is the one that will be pumped and um, of course you could pump any language if you would put epsilon in those V because you can repeat it as many times as you want and, uh, and it wouldn't and the word would still be in the language so it is forbidden because it says we must be at least have or have at least a length of one and one another thing what the uh, what it says is the u and the v part together must be smaller equal n and it's the same thing as i explained before because my number n is 3 or in this example it would be 3 and if you have any word that is that has a length of 3 or greater then um, you have to go through any loop and of course if you have a word that is longer than n then it well it's enough to look in the left side of the word because you have to went through a loop already here so it's not necessary to look for a loop here so now i will take an an example separation for example where I could say u is a and b so for v there's only for v there's only left to be b well I could say that my u is an a and v is bb but uh, it's enough to find one separation so that it works and then I say so my V part because I have to find a separation with the whole word my V part will be the rest of the word so C D D and the pumping lemma says if you if you have those words U V or the separated word U V to the power of I W, then those words must stay in the language. That means if you take the, you can take the V zero times or two times or a hundred times, but the word always has to stay in the language, and then the, um, then the language is pumpable. So, for example, if my I would be two, then that means that my well the the u part will stay the same it would be a and b because those i only works for the v and then i have those v part i have it twice so it would be bb and my w will stay the same so it would be CDD and as you can easily see I um, no matter how big my I will be I always take more loops in here and um, I always will take more loops in here and uh, the word will still stay in the language.